Hello, and welcome to this video. We're going to show you how to configure and operate your ePulse sensors powered by our patented technology CEDA. Breakthrough solution for detecting UXOs, lines, cables, pipelines, and other buried or hard to detect targets that may not be visible with sonar, camera, and magnetometer. Tetrapulse sensor is an active electrical impedance sensor. It has two main components. The pod, brain of the system. And the four electrodes, the sensitive part of the system. The pod is connected to your vehicle with a single subcon connector for Ethernet communication and 20 to 48 volt DC power supply. Each electrode is connected to the pod with a single subcon to subcon cable. For seabed mapping, mount the electrodes facing the seabed with a clear line of sight, avoiding metallic support structures. For the most demanding applications, we also supply Octopulse with 8 electrodes, 300 meters, and 6,000 meters depth rating. From the Alia Software Welcome page, create a new mission and select your sensor type. Devices tab lists all the L wave sensors in the network. Connect to the sensor of your choice and access its network parameters. Select the electrodes connected to your pod. Connect to the NTP server for sensor data synchronization. If you prefer to visualize the data using third-party survey software, select ELQZM for NMEA format and set the port. You can set the command and control to manage the sensor through an autonomous vehicle's master system. Organize the electrode viewer according to your vehicle integration. Add a first arrangement and define the single active dipper lay for the electric field transmission. Here, the active dipper lay is at the front of the vehicle, between electrodes 5 and 6. A voltage of 20 volt will be applied between electrodes 5 and 6, injecting a 1 kHz alternative current in the medium over 100 periods. At the same time, one or more passive dipoles can be configured with the remaining electrodes. Here, passive dipper lay 7 to 8 at the rear of the vehicle. Survey tip, at survey depth, press this button to set the optimal gains. You can set up several arrangements with different active and passive dipoles. This unique capability, only offered by CEDA technology, yields multiple points of view of the seabed throughout your survey for targets of unknown orientation. Finally in the Sensors tab, select the UDP port and the protocol for your positioning sensor. ePulse sensor measures simultaneously all the components of the complex impedance. Resistance reactance, amplitude, and phase to characterize the electrical nature of the seabed and the targets. Conductive, non-conductive, capacitive. While diving, the increased impedance indicates that you have reached the minimum flying altitude for seabed survey. The lower the altitude over the seabed, the more you detect buried targets. Maintain a constant survey altitude and speed. Your complex impedance will be stable around zero. Your baseline. Typically, high amplitude indicates a non-metallic target. 
light and low amplitude indicates a metallic target. It's a change survey. In the ALIA interface, start and stop the data acquisition with this top left buttons. Here we have opened a past mission, where we completed three data acquisitions. Let's review acquisition 1. On the timeline we see some events tagged by the operator during the survey. Navigate through the time plot to review the impedance data. Active dipole amplitudes. Active dipole phases. Passive dipole amplitudes. Passive dipole phases. The time plots can be configured with the top right button. Let's plot the amplitude variations of the active dipole 5 to 6. Click on the top map button. Click on configure at the top of the screen. Add a point layer and select your arrangement dipole the data you want to plot. Enter the start and end times of the survey when you were at constant altitude to avoid false alarms. Always apply your changes. Then go back to the map. Set the color map. And check for electrical anomalies. Use the cleaning tool to remove any low quality data such as during turns. You can also select an area of interest. Once your point layer is cleaned, you can interpolate the data set. Generate a contour layer. Set the grid size, the interpolation parameters, and the resolution. Apply your changes. Zoom to the target and use the measuring tool. Several color maps are available. To classify your detection, check that the vehicle was stable during the flyover. Let's open a second ALIA window to plot the altitude. Create a new map and a new points layer. Select the altitude received from your positioning system. Set the same period of interest than for the impedance data. You can change the layer names.
set the color mark. Proceed as before to generate contours from the altitude point layer. Check for any variation above plus or minus 0.1 meter over 1.5 meter distance which would be collocated with the impedance anomaly. You can also complete the classification with roll and pitch data, which should not exceed plus or minus 5 degrees. Finally export your impedance data contour layer, compatible with third-party GIS software. Thank you for watching.